Was it a robbery? Valentina Shevchenko defeats Tyla Santos by a split decision, and a lot of people do not agree with this. It seems like most people believe that Tyla Santos upset the dominant champion in Valentina Shevchenko, who now has the most title defenses out of any female fighter in history. It seems like most people believe that Tyla Santos won the first three rounds, with Valentina Shevchenko for sure winning the last two. And even I thought so as well. I thought Santos won the first three rounds. I thought she should have won the fight. I recall that the second round was debatable, but I absolutely did not agree with the 49-46 scorecard. How did the judges score this though? So the first judge, Howard Hughes, had Valentina Shevchenko winning the fight, giving her the second, fourth, and fifth rounds, Tala Santos got the third and the first. The second judge, David Letteby, gave Tala Santos the fight, gave her the first three rounds, Shevchenko the last two, and then the third judge, Clemens Werner, I don't know what he was watching, he gave Valentina Shevchenko the first two rounds and the last two rounds, only giving Tala Santos the third. My man must have been a some Alice, because I don't know how he saw the first round going to Valentina Shevchenko, but that's ultimately what we're looking at here. The first and the second round. The last three were pretty decisive, and the judges agreed on that. We're gonna see, did in fact Shevchenko win this 49-46? Did she win it 48-47? Or was Tala Santos the rightful winner, as it seems like most people believed? Well, we're going to have to be looking at the judging criteria here, not exactly how we think the fight should be scored, but actually what the rules state. And according to effective striking, damage trumps all, so we're going to be categorizing every single strike in accordance to damage to get the most accurate analysis, and we also have to look at effective grappling, which fighter was getting closer to a potential finish of the match. And remember about takedowns. There were takedowns here, but takedowns are not necessarily an effective grappling method. It's really what you do with your takedowns that makes it effective grappling. Not the takedown by itself, unless it's like some big slam or something. I do have a video explaining the scoring criteria detail by detail, so I recommend you guys checking that out if you want to know the full script of this. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Control means nothing. So let's get right into that first round. Shevchenko starts the fight like she starts every single fight in a feeling out process, just taps the lead leg. Now this exchange is pretty hard to see from the camera angle. Shevchenko tries to be the aggressor here as it looks like Santos is not willing to move forward. So Shevchenko goes out and throws a Superman punch, which Santos pulls away from and it looks like, it's hard to tell, that she intercepts Shevchenko with a jab. We're gonna give this the benefit of the doubt, but we'll have to look back at this if it makes a difference in the round. Santos checks a leg kick and then Santos eventually decides to move forward with a blitzing combination. She wings over a left overhand and then tries to land a right straight. As she's throwing the left overhand, Shevchenko tries to pull on the punch like she always does and counter Santos with the right hook. But even as she pulled away and parried the punch, it still connects on her chin slightly. So definitely a light attack but she definitely stings Santos with that right hook. As you can see, the immediate impact of the blow was heavier. So we're gonna count this one as a medium attack. Shevchenko checks a kick. After Shevchenko is able to get into the clinch and push Santos up against the fence, she does land two knees, one to the head, one to the body, and then Santos returned one of her own. Three shoulder strikes from Shevchenko, one back of the head shot from Santos, and then Santos is able to land a few more strikes, one knee to the leg, one body shot, another strike to the head, and Shevchenko lands a groin strike before going for her lateral drop, her takedown against Santos, which failed on her. She didn't even get Santos in the correct position to throw her over. Usually you want to get your opponent to lean forward so you can easily chuck him over. But Santos keep it a lot of weight down and behind her, which made this extremely difficult to pull off. And ultimately, by putting 100% effort into it, Shevchenko falls down as Santos falls on top of her, and I have no idea why so many of the female fighters go for this. The headlock. Shevchenko rolls over and attempts to get a headlock on Santos, and Santos actually countered this a few times throughout the fight, and it was eventually able to get Shevchenko's back. In this dominant position, Santos was chasing the rear naked choke for a minute and 44 seconds. This is like the equivalent of multiple medium grappling effectiveness. And the one at the end, she actually almost gets the choke fully in on Shevchenko. This could be deemed even the equivalent of a heavy when it comes to effective grappling. Shevchenko then proceeds to land with Santos on her back, 24 strikes to the head. And that ends the first round. Judging from all the strikes, Shevchenko clearly outlanded Santos in both damage and strike count, but nothing she really landed caused that much damage or was that effective against Tyler Santos. According to effective grappling, the closer you get to finishing off the match, that is going to be much heavier when it comes to scoring the round. She was chasing a rear naked choke while having Shevchenko's back 
for almost two minutes straight, and at the end of the round, she almost had the choke all the way in. According to the judging criteria, because Shevchenko did not have as much effective striking compared to Tala Santos' effective grappling, Santos got closer to a potential finish. You have to give the first round to Tala Santos. I have no idea what Clemens Werner, that judge, was thinking. He must have thought that these strikes were more effective than Tala Santos almost getting a rear naked choke and getting Shevchenko's back for almost two minutes straight. So already we're two to two. Last two rounds are Shevchenko, first and third are Santos. Let's get right into the most controversial round, that second. As always, Shevchenko starts with a leg kick. And then as Shevchenko goes forward to throw the 1-2 combo, it's hard to tell from the camera angle if the left hand actually lands. The angle of the punch looks like it should, but there is no reaction from Santos. It doesn't look like she got hit at all. So we'll come back to this if it makes a difference in the round. Then Santos is able to land a knee to the body when her back's up against the cage. And then as Santos reverses this, which she did many times throughout the fight. Very impressive the way she was able to do it. Shevchenko then lands five strikes to the head as Santos returns with five knees to the leg before she goes in for that outside trip, which does get Shevchenko to the ground. While on her back, Valentina Shevchenko was able to land a total of 30 strikes and not only that, Shevchenko also went in for a gogo plata, a choke where she pulls the opponent's head into her shin bone to choke them out. It wasn't all the way in there, but definitely will be rewarded as some sort of effective grappling. Maybe the equivalent of medium grappling effectiveness. While Santos on top only landed 12 light strikes before the ref stood them up. After they get stood up, Shevchenko goes to the body instead, where the majority of her attacks were to the head or to the legs, and she grazes with her toes before they get into another clinch exchange. And boy, here we go, the head and arm throw. Shevchenko takes Tela Santos down unfortunately with this, and attempted to get Santos back while Santos had an underhook, which was going to block this transition. But improvising, it looked like Shevchenko wanted to go for the arm, but because Santos' head was on the mat and how close Shevchenko's head was to Santos' body, it was kind of hard to go for the arm bar, so instead, she tried to get the full mount and Santos flipped over. But with Shevchenko's leg caught under Santos, she was in a very awkward position, almost on her side, and all Santos had to do was push her over and get on top. While on top, Santos was able to land 11 strikes, all light attacks, none of them really with any power, while Shevchenko landed 26 of her own, and that ends the second round. So Valentina Shevchenko outstruck Tyler Santos by 34 total strikes. Nothing in this round was damaging. So because of that, you would have to go to cumulative damage, and that is going to go more to who is landing more strikes and stuff. And even though Tyler Santos got a takedown, Shevchenko got one of her own actually, and even though Santos got a reverse, she ultimately did nothing with it. At least Shevchenko went for a gogo plata and actually got her in there, not just being aggressive with these things, but actually succeeding in many of these attempts. So this second round was definitely close, but ultimately, I guess I was wrong. You would have to give this round to Valentina Shevchenko ever so slightly. There is still a bit of an argument that you can give Tala Santos for the reverse and stuff, but at the end of the day, she did nothing with it. So how much of that is effective grappling? How much of that is her potentially finishing Shevchenko with that? It wasn't even close at all. She didn't get out of the guard. She didn't attempt anything. She barely landed any strikes. She didn't even attempt submissions. So at the end of the day, you're going to have to give this round to Shevchenko. So did the judges get this correct? Only one of them did. This fight was not a robbery at all. In fact, Valentina Shevchenko should have won this fight by 48 to 47. Very, very close. All respect to Tala Santos for her effort and the fact that she almost beat the most dominant champion in the UFC right now. Not a lot of people give Tala Santos a chance, but it does show to everybody that Shevchenko is beatable. Her grappling is not on the level of her striking. Her takedowns are pretty sloppy. She can be tripped out, but it's only a few fighters are going to be able to do this. And it shows to me that Tatiana Suarez's chances of beating Shevchenko has skyrocketed because of this. To the point where now I really want to see that fight. I would love to see how Tatiana Suarez goes up against someone like Shevchenko, but she's going to have to win a few fights before she gets that title shot. So Valentina Shevchenko is your rightful winner, and I'll see you guys in the next video.